Scooby-Doo is a surprisingly long-lasting franchise. I don't think anyone in 1969 thought a cartoon about a couple of draft-dodging teenagers hunting ghosts with their talking dog would go on to have 13 spin-offs, 41 animated movies split up between TV and straight-to-video, two live-action movies, two live-action prequel movies, an animated theatrical movie that hoped to launch a franchise but didn't, and a movie about Daphne and Velma that added absolutely nothing to anything. Did I miss one? Scooby-Doo is an IP that has continued on for decades, connecting with generation after generation based solely on the premise that maybe the real monsters are people like you and me behind masks. And in the words of Freddie Prince Jr., it was a talking dog, man. It was a talking dog, you know what I mean? I grew up watching What's New Scooby-Doo, the new Scooby-Doo movies, a pup named Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School, Reluctant Werewolf, Cyber Chase, Zombie Island, which is Ghost, and of course, the early 2000s, James Gunn live action, Scooby-Doo and Scooby-Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed. Those movies were a big part of my childhood, as I'm sure they were for a lot of people my age. And every time I watched them, it got me thinking, who would I cast in my own live action adaption of Scooby-Doo? Do you see where this video is going? Scooby-Dooby-Doo, where are you? We got some work to do now. Let's start off with the obvious, Scooby-Doo. He's a namesake in the face of the franchise. None of it exists without the hungry, hungry, scaredy cat great dame that is Scoobert doo Who would play Scooby in my movie? That's a no-brainer, and the obvious choice and only choice for me is the one and only Frank Welker. Even though Welker isn't the first person to voice Scooby-Doo, that honor goes to the late Don Messick, he is the most recognized and the one that I grew up with. So for me, Frank Welker is the only voice of Scooby-Doo. Must need our bodies to survive in sunlight. Like a human suit. SPF 1 million. But what are they doing here in the first place? Daphne, you okay? Yeah. But I'm not Daphne. Daphne was never my favorite character. I'm sure she was somebody's favorite character, but I do appreciate her. She's more than just the girl character, and that was proven with Sarah Michelle Gellar's portrayal of her in the live-action Scooby-Doo movies. I think Daphne needs to be played by someone who can be tough but approachable if that makes any sense. I'm not looking for Wonder Woman here. The one performer I keep coming back to is Angori Rice, known mostly for the Marvel Spider-Man movies, but also The Nice Guys and Honor Society and Mayor of Easton. I think she's a pretty strong actress, but she hasn't really gotten the proper chance to show off her ability. Now, is Daphne really a character that you can sink your teeth into and show off your acting chops? Are any of the members of Mr. Inc. really... Probably not, but I think Angori Rice would give a good performance and could really embody Daphne, especially for the modern age. Uh, Grandma? What the hell, Velma? It's simple behavior modification. It'll cause a dog to discontinue any action. You simply flick it on the nose. Observe. Scoop. Hmm? <coughs> See? <coughs> oh! Fred is the de facto leader of Mystery Inc. He's the guy that makes the plans and drives the van. In recent years, Fred has been portrayed as somewhat of a himbo, a big, strong goober with a well-meaning heart. I think that to play Fred, you need to be able to be a himbo, but also be that leader type. It's not a hard line to walk, if we're being completely honest. And... I think someone that could pull it off is Tyler James Williams. From Everybody Hates Chris to Abbott Elementary, he's proven that he's got what it takes. I think he could pull off being the strong, in-charge leader type while also being able to be somewhat of a goof. 
He was also in the movie The Wedding Year, which I, I, I just really enjoy that movie. I wasn't expecting such an enlightened answer from such... A bitch. You almost killed me! Guess I didn't try hard enough. I don't have HBO Max, so I haven't really seen the Velma series, but I do have TikTok, and well, they pretty much put every single episode up on there. I'm not here to judge somebody else's show, but from what I've seen, it didn't look... great. But the one thing I do think Mindy Kaling got right was making Velma South Asian. It just feels like the right choice to me, so I figure I'd carry that over into my casting. In the past, I would have said that Miracle Workers actress Geraldine Viswanathan Nathan would be a good Velma, and she would be, but it feels like too obvious a choice to me. Ritu Arya from the Umbrella Academy is another interesting choice, but for some reason, and it might be because I've been watching a lot of Smosh recently, but one of their newer cast members, Arasha Lalani, really sticks out to me, and I feel like she could really pull off a reserved but resilient Velma. Now, she's pretty prominent on Smosh, and she had an uncredited role in the Ryan Reynolds Christmas movie Spirited, but Velma could be her first lead role. <laughs> Are you challenging me? And now we come to one of my favorite characters, a character that I relate to on a personal level, Norval Shaggy Rogers. Shaggy and Scooby-Doo are the canaries in the coal mine when it comes to Mr. Inc.'s investigations, whether they like it or not. They're the true MVPs, and there is only one actor who I think can portray Shaggy. Uh, and that's me. Like... Zoink, Scooby-Doo! Is that a monster chasing after us? Like, look out! I think that's a monster coming after us. Scooby-Doo, you go in there and you're gonna earn yourself a Scooby snack! I'm just kidding. Or am I? But, for real, I have a casting choice that may be a little bit out of left field, so just hear me out, because I think it works perfectly. Maya Hawk. Maya Hawk just gives me a shaggy vibe. I don't know how to explain it, but she just seems like shaggy to me. Obviously, these casting choices are a bit different. There's a few gender and race swaps, and the actors are a little bit older than the original characters, but in my Scooby-Doo movie, the gang is adults. You got a problem with that? Other changes that I would make that I think make sense would be instead of the gang traveling around in a van, it would just make more sense for them to travel around in an RV of some sort. Van life is big right now, but four people and a dog living that way? Someone's going to end up dead or pregnant. I also think it would be a cool idea if Mystery Inc. had a ghost hunting TV show or a web series. Because why are they doing this? Out of the goodness of their heart? Come on. It would also be cool if Matthew Lillard and Freddie Prince Jr. and the original cast from the early 2000s Scooby-Doo movies made cameos. Because, hey, that's the only way we're going to get a reunion at this point. Who's going to write this monstrosity? Who's going to direct it? I don't know. I didn't really put that much thought into it. It's my third time trying to record this video, and uh, I'm kind of fucking done. So, you, you pick. The video that I uploaded two weeks ago about the Drew Carey show has done numbers. I'm actually really surprised at how well that video did, and I can't say thank you enough and and tell you how much I appreciate you guys watching these silly little videos that I make. And I love that I can talk about something as random or obscure as the Drew Carey show and why it's not on TV. And people would watch it and enjoy it. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But with that being said, my name is Travis. This is Wonder Nerd. Like, comment, share, subscribe for new videos. And remember, nerds rule.